away from home against a League Two side. Is it almost a free shot for you? Yeah, that's how you have to treat it, really, because um, you're the underdogs, and generally underdogs get a free shot. I'm not sure we're that far underdogs at the minute with our form and, and, and their form, but um, we'll keep it that way for the time being because it, it suits our cause. Um, and as I said to the boys, you know, we're not going, it's not a, this trip up the motorway, whatever it is, five hours and six hours, whatever it is, is not going to be a waste of time because I, I feel that uh, there's every chance of you know, getting through to the next round. We're not going to disrespect them like we always say because Ronnie has a habit of getting his teams sorted out at, at some point. But uh, they're certainly going through a, a poor, poorish patch at the moment. So they're inconsistent enough for you to feel you've got a chance then? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd take the weekend off and stay at home if I thought we didn't have a chance. So I think our team and our the way we're playing and our attitude at the minute is we're always going to have a chance, whoever we play. So it's always, um, you, you look forward to these games at the moment and uh, I'm looking forward to this one. I think that's the best way of describing it. I saw Conor from Neil Ardley after the game between Wimbledon and Hartlepool last week, which Pools lost 2-0, where he said that there was, quote, a gulf between the two sides. So Ronnie Moore has just got that, and he's he would expect a reaction from his team, won't he, this week? Who said there was a gulf between the two? Neil sides? Ardley, the Wimbledon manager. Yeah, he's a bit strong, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> after beating him. Um, well, it's... Um, well, I mean, normally managers don't say that, do they? Because it's a bit disrespectful to the to the other manager. But um, I suppose when you're down there, people you know, like to tread on you a little bit. Um, listen, it, at the moment, if Hartlepool are uh, in their heads, believe that uh, if they believe there was a big gulf between them and Wimbledon, then you know they're they're not going to turn it round soon. But because Ron's been around and uh, I'm sure he'll have words and sentences and training sessions to try and turn it round. I mean, from what I've seen, they, their second half performance was, was not bad and uh, it was um, somewhere near, probably where a little bit nearer where he wanted to, where he wanted to be. But uh, yeah, Wimbledon are a hard side to play against at, at, at Wimbledon and they're, they're doing OK, they're in a good run and uh, obviously they get the ball forward. There's lots of free kicks, corners, you know, so they're always difficult to play against anyway. They're not the easiest team to travel to. So, uh, anyway, that, that was their game. But um, I'm surprised if he said it in, in those those words because he's, he's normally quite uh, diplomatic, Neil Loudly. In, in the last round against Haven, you had a shed load of chances in, in the second game. Keeper played very well and you found one goal to win it. Were you aware that in a game like this, your conversion rate of chance compared to chances made will probably need to be better to get through? Um, well, maybe. Uh, it depends on whether they can take any of their chances. Um, and if one's enough, one's enough, as long as we you know, defend well and um, and we, we do well. But, of course, you, you want more of your opportunities converted. Of course you do. The players do and uh, individuals do because they want to get a few more goals themselves but uh, to be honest we're not short of goals you know we're, we're not the team that's struggling for goals and um, all managers will tell you that as long as you're creating opportunities every now and again you'll come up against a goalkeeper who, who's having a Royal Rovers day do you know what I mean nothing beats him and, and he, he was that goalie on that day now uh, we'll see if you know if we get them opportunities again whether Trevor Carson can uh, do the same and um. Just bringing up Carson, obviously he had a, a good season here personally and he's just got back in, in the Hartlepool team. So from his point of view, I'm sure he'll, he'll want to impress not only his own fans, but the Cheltenham fans as well, who, who saw a lot of him, frankly, in a, in, in, in a sense last year. Yeah, I, I can't speak for him, of course, but um, he'll, 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 I'm sure he'll be pleased for being in the team. And uh, it's always a, a little bit more spice to a game when it's your, your old club. Um, he won't know many of the players that are turning up there. You know, a couple of the subs, Asa, uh, Volney. You know, he'll know them. But um, you know, he decided to go past his new sort of thing last year, and he's gone up there, and um, that's what he decided to do. So uh, you know, for us, it's not about 
Trevor Carson on the day, of course. I know you've got to bring him up because he was here. But um, it's about getting through to the next round of the FA Cup. And that's the, the massive thing that we, we actually want to do that. It's not one of them where you say, well, it don't matter, we can concentrate on the league. Um, we want to concentrate on the league and the FA Cup. Has there been a lot of thought from you this week about formation? Well, we tend to, on the outside, perhaps speak a, a bit too much of formation sometimes, but you did tinker with it a bit, a bit at Grimsby. The question I suppose, is now, what do you do for a, a different opponent? Um, well, you do what you need to do. If you've got a tinker, then you tinker, um, you little tinker. Uh, <laughs> um, but if sometimes you don't need to. Sometimes it's just, as I said to you on the day, livening some players up so instead of doing five kilometres in, in the first half I made them do ten in the second half you know what I mean so um, that livens it up and that looks like they're playing right back right midfield and right wing uh, if a centre forward puts in more effort it looks like he's he's played midfield and up front and wide sometimes so really that's how you, you tinker it you tinker with their minds and uh, yes sometimes you have to change a, a particular shape to suit but um, generally you have to that's if you're really worried about the opposition and I'm more worried about my team becoming consistent so therefore we we keep to a pretty uh, rigid pattern in in our shape and our tactics but if we have to tinker with it mentally then I do that sometimes and to some degree the reason you had a, a good first third of the season or so, is because the side's been very settled. Yeah, exactly. And it makes it difficult for the lads that are on the bench. I'm trying to get them involved because they, you know, they are good enough to play. But, um, of course, when you've got a team that's only lost two in 22 games or something now, you know, including the cup games, then um, you, can't, you can't change much because um, you can't go leaving people out unnecessarily. Uh, because all of a sudden it, it, it doesn't become a, a pattern. You lose that pattern a little bit. So the lads that are waiting to get in have just got to wait, uh, like Billy has for an injury. They don't want an injury, but um, so Billy gets his opportunity now up front because of uh, Amari's going to be out for a few weeks. And how long do you know what what's what's the scan revealed? Keep leading you into the next question. <laughs> no, we're a great double at me. <laughs> Little and large, no, no, little, little and little. Um, the the scan he goes for today, the real, you know, the proper scan where we, we get a specialist. But we've they've had a look at it, and uh, the good news will be if he doesn't need an op, and it, and then you're just rehabilitating the ligaments around his ankle, and that will be three or four weeks. Uh, but if he does need an op and he needs something else to steady it and then it's obviously a, a little bit longer so but we haven't had that information yet so we're we're keeping our fingers crossed and our toes sure it'll be a bit painful yeah <laughs> <laughs> um overall just just thinking last year about the draw as a whole last year Cheltenham played dover in the cup and it was a league team in different form against uh, side from outside the league on a good run that's a bit what this game is isn't it your the boots on the other foot for you this time yeah, it is. That's why you've got to go there with that feeling, like you said in your earlier question. Of nothing to lose, you know. If, if you get beat up there, people say, "Well, it was a second division club." But for me, it's a test of this team because you keep telling this team that if they get promoted, then they get that opportunity to um, prove themselves in the league. Well, here's a great early opportunity to prove themselves against a team that is a league team. Um, there's obviously that little bit about us, the ones, certainly me and the staff that were here last year, where Hartlepool had that unbelievable run at, at the uh, end of the season that sort of cost us, um, cost us, we cost ourselves the relegation and that. But um, but they stayed up and this club went down. And uh, at the moment, I'm not sure which group or which club are the happiest. I think our supporters at this moment in time are probably happier than the Hartlepool supporters. Our players are pretty happy with what's going on. Um, and certainly as a management team, we're, we're pretty happy with what's going on. You know, So um, we, we, we've got to go there believing that uh, we're 
that we can come away and get ourselves in the in the next round. And just lastly, are you going to try and win it in in, in one hit and not have to go through the rigmarole of, of a replay? Well, it'd be nice, um, but if we've got to make them travel down to us, then that will be a good result as well. It means that we you know we we're still in the draw, still in the cup. So. Uh, no, I won't be asking the lads to stick a goal in the back of their net if to stop us having a replay, or in the back of our own net to stop us having a replay. You know, it's you, you take the game as it comes, and uh, we'll, we're going there to win the game. We're definitely not going there to park the bus, um, as they say. Um, so, you know, we, we're going there to finish it if we can. On the Amari situation, would there be a temptation to? To bring somebody in if on, on yeah, the there's a there's always a temptation to keep improving your squad. Really, I would do that anyway. But um, you get to the stage of the season in in January where they're not always available. Certainly, if you're still in the cup, often people don't want to cut tie players um, at this late stage because you know a lot of them will still be in the cup. Certainly, league teams anyway, um, but also. The short-term loans finish on November the 27th, something like that. So you end up having to spend the whole of December, really, without being able to go and get a, an emergency loan, you know, which is what it's for, an emergency. Um, in which case, uh, you could leave yourself short during a very important time. So uh, clubs don't often want to let too many players out at, at, at this stage. But uh, if we don't get anything, I, think, I believe that we've got enough. I believe that you know we've got Billy that can play up there. Uh, I know Dates can play up there as well. Um, of course, if you lose uh, somebody like Danny Wright, then that, you, you lose that little bit of presence up there. And uh, then we would have to make sure that we bring someone in. But if someone comes in, they're going to want to play. You know, you're not going to be able to say, you know, come in and sit on my bench because he'll end up saying. I might as well sit on the bench I'm sitting on already, sort of thing, you know. So, um, it, it people can say, you know, go out and get a loan, but everyone's looking for the Wayne Rooney on loan. Do you know what I mean? Maybe even not Wayne Rooney, although he scored Saturday, so, <laughs> uh, scored in the week. But um, yeah, so it's not as easy as just saying it. Yeah. But we are, we have got our lists, we have got our people, and uh, in an emergency. We should be okay. Yeah. Does that almost depend on how the, the news comes back from Amari today or yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, it does. It, yeah. it does really. Yeah. yeah. Um, regarding Danny, he's he's played every minute of every game. Yeah. How long can he keep going doing that for? Do you think? Well, he, <laughs> he looks older than he is, I think. <laughs> but he's um, hopefully for the whole season because he really has had a. Fantastic season, you know his his effort that he's put in because obviously I see him in training every day as well, and he puts that same effort in in training. But the beauty is is that we got him to a level of fitness that maybe if you asked him, I'm not sure he's been at mm. before, and he's enjoying the work rate because he's fit. You know, obviously uh, over the last sort of few months they've sorted out his his diet and what he can and can't eat, that sort of stuff. I mean, he's a very fit lad anyway. Anyway, And if you bump into him, it is like bumping into a brick wall, to be honest, and he, and he is a, a strong lad. But he's he's nice with it, and he's a, he's a great personality. He's sort of like a, a quiet leader that leads by example, and everybody sort of respects him, and uh, I certainly do. And at the end of the day, if uh, if the club goes into the league um, and he hasn't played in the league before then uh, he would he would handle that comfortably now Does it amaze you that somebody like him or and Kyle Storer haven't played league football before? Yeah it does because both of them have been super for me and uh, I don't know how I've missed them before actually but, <laughs> but um, I think both of them have taken to the training and uh, you know they say trust your training um, and those who have given everything in their training, and that is showing in their play and their general attitude. They're both really good competitors as well. You know, they um, and can police the dressing room along with Downsy and um, a couple of others. They, uh, you know, it's, it's a comfortable group because uh, they all want to 
get through and, and either get through the cup competitions or get through to the football league. So those two are sort of the energy or part of the energy that's getting us there. If you look at the next run of fixtures after Hartlepool, I think there's only really Forest Green that are in the in the top half of the table. So a win at Hartlepool would be a nice springboard into a into yeah. a, a run of fixtures that could go a long way to deciding what happens. Yeah, they? it'd be a great springboard, but we've got to be careful that we we don't suddenly think we're going to get 30 points from the next 10 games. You know, we we had a great result was it against Wrexham on the TV, and then we went to Altrincham yeah. and got beat. Um, and I think we had another big game, Forest Green, then we got beat against Tranmere. Yeah. So we don't want them that to be patterns, if you like. So we've got to be really careful because there's no mugs in this league, no mugs. And if you don't turn up or you think you've got to go and um, you know, play below your standard and below your energy, then uh, you, you can get beat. And uh, so... We'll take, you know, I'll, I'll say what everybody says. We'll take each game as it comes and uh, and try and pick up the three points and then adjust to it as we need to. But it it's it's good that we've played a lot of the bigger teams, the teams that are going to be there or thereabouts. And those mini leagues, we're doing all right in. You know, every time we play the team like Woking, Bromley, Dover, they're always up there. Gateshead, Forest Green, you know, Eastleigh. Um, Wrexham so you know we've we played some teams that at the time were in very very good form so we'll have to wait and see how we get on with the next group